right, so at this point, I've uh, checked that all of the channels are working um, by, by going, by uh, generating a test signal going all the way around the room. I've hooked up my, by the way, if they weren't working, we would stop here. We'd go try to figure out what's broken before we keep setting up test equipment. There's no point. You just got to get everything to work right. And then next step is to set up all the microphones and calibrate them. Now I'm actually going to start the process. You know, that, that all can take an hour by the time you've done the debugging and, and gotten everything up and running. And we've been here for about a little bit uh, less than that. But um, so next step is, OK, let's start. Let's start the, uh, the calibration. But wait, before you do that, you really need to spend time making sure all of the channels are hooked up in the right place. They're all uh, correctly in the right polarity, that there's no distortion, there's no other issues. I already did that in the pre-calibration session that preceded that. You want to do that before all of the fabric, all the finishes, all of that stuff is up. Because if you have to fix something, you don't want to be tearing down a screen, tearing down fabric uh, to fix it. So that's already done. So I would normally spend the next hour or two going through and just checking that every speaker is right, is not buzzing, is not rattling. Um, that's already done. So now we're going to start the process of equalization. And on all of these channels, the manual equalization process I'm going to do is going to take about an hour and a half, maybe two hours at most. Then when we're done with that, I'm going to break for lunch, let my ears relax, and then I'm going to come back and listen to the results. Really, really important. You got to hear that. Now, for me, on a, on a home cinema, I'm going to uh, first measure and equalize and listen to the most important speaker, which is the center. People sometimes think of the left and right speakers as the mains. They're not. The center speaker in a home cinema application is the most important one that gets most of the energy because it's centered on the screen. Of course, there's dialogue, but if there's a loud car on screen, it's going to be fed to the center speaker. That's the most important one. So with the storm, uh, I'm going to generate noise, a test noise. And I'm going to tell the storm, the storm processor to go to the center speaker. So right now, you can't tell on the phone, but there's this funny uh, static noise that's coming from that center speaker. That's actually pseudo random pitch noise from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And I am going to look and see how that's coming down. So if you look on the screen, this is the measured response of that speaker raw. This is just right out of the box. We haven't done any EQ yet. There it is. So that's already a good start. Obviously, the subwoofer is up too loud. We'll turn that down. But the rest of it already looks pretty good. I'm going to work on the center. I'm going to finesse that. I'm going to, I'm going to make... Mute that. Um, I'm going to make that sound good. And I'll talk later about what I mean by sound good. Not just measure, measure well, but actually sound good. And then all of the other channels, the left, the right, the wides, the sides, the tops, are all going to be tuned to look like and sound like the center. That's the reference. So we are going to run this thing with speakers and subwoofers using proper bass management where we cut off each channel's bass at the appropriate frequency for that speaker and feed it to the subwoofers. But I actually like to know what the speaker is doing on its own without the, without the crossover. I want to know that a speaker is pretty good and linear down at least an octave below the crossover. So on this speaker that I want to cross over at around 80 hertz, I want to see what it's doing all the way down to 40. So my first phase of, uh, of calibration in the EQ world is to feed actually full range uh, noise into the speaker, uh, just turning off the high pass filter or moving it down to about 40 hertz and just see what it does. So in the case of that speaker, this blue line over here, this is the response of that center speaker with no subwoofer. That's re-measuring now. So that's the speaker on its own. So obviously, uh, the speaker, which is right, it's here, it's mounted in a kind of a baffle wall, it's flat up on the wall, is getting a whole bunch of bass boost, which is nice. I'm going to turn that down with an EQ, and it'll give the woofers a lot of breathing room, because I'm going to turn it down about eight or nine decibels. It's a huge amount. And those woofers, even in really loud, loud scenes in a movie, are just going to be idling, because they're just getting one, you know, 10 dB down 
of what they what they would do which is one third of the voltage uh, which is one ninth of the power that's uh, that's going to be really nice um, so I know the tendency is to in general is to you know set up all those subwoofer crossovers and equalize through that I, I like better to start in just making sure each speaker on its own is linear and equalized on its own same thing with a subwoofer is actually figure out what it's doing about an octave or two above the crossover and then splice it all together at the end